Yes, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? This is What's On Jones coming right back at you with a pro wrestling related video reviewing WrestleMania 31. It was well worth your money. $9.99. Trust me, that is worth the price. Matter of fact, we got a lot for $9.99. I guarantee you that. So if you missed that on this show, you shouldn't have, man, because it's cheap and it was great. Get WrestleMania 31. Trust me, you will not be disappointed. First, we start off with start off with the ladder match for the Intercontinental title, and it was an okay ladder match. It was decent. It clearly wasn't the greatest ladder match that they ever had at WrestleMania, or the greatest ladder match I've ever seen, but at the same time, nowhere near the worst, but it was a decent ladder match. It wasn't a spot fest ladder match, because let's be honest, we don't have a lot of wrestlers in this match that would work that type of style, you know, with a whole bunch of moonsaults here, or you no know, high dives. We got a couple of dives, but not a whole lot. Um, we had a really, really good spot where when um, Luke Harper had power bomb. Of course, the lunatic fringe himself. He power bombed him, and when he power bombed him, man, I'm telling you right now, when he power bombed that guy, it looked like he broke him in half. So it wouldn't surprise me at all. It wouldn't surprise me that if the lunatic fringe himself is in pain and damn sure wouldn't surprise me if he has something broken or, or what because that was probably probably like the best spot of the night to be honest with you but that was a really good spot we got a a um a suplex off from the top of the ladder we got a really nice suplex if i'm not mistaken it was of course way barrett suplex and stardust right off the top of the ladder so we got a pretty good spot right there and this match like i said you know it wasn't bad but it was decent you could tell these guys tried their absolute very best with what they had and you didn't really know who was gonna win but daniel bryan does win nonetheless so daniel bryan walks out with the intercontinental champion follow you daniel bryan marks out there you probably will love that yes next moving on we have randy orton versus self Rollins. Randy Orton versus Seth Rollins was another pretty decent match. Wasn't great, of course, but it was a pretty decent match. Towards the end of the match, which was which was probably the best, the best thing about this match was the finish. That RKO was so unexpected and so amazing. It came out of nowhere. Seth Rollins was getting ready to do his curve stomp. And normally when he gets ready to do his curve stomp, he puts his foot on his opponent's head. No, he, this time he put it on Randy Orton's shoulder. And when he did that, Randy Orton had lift up. And when he lift up, Seth Rollins had lift up even higher. And this time, he's he's so far up in the air, you know, he, he almost flew a little like. But when he came down, Randy Orton caught him with that RKO. Nice slam, nice knockout. It was a nice finish to a decent match. Randy Orton walks out the winner of WrestleMania 31. Next, we had a. T well, no, not. We're not, we're not going to that match yet. Triple H versus Sting. Triple H versus Sting was a pretty decent match, man. And I'm sorry if you hear that machine. <laughs> Just work with me. Triple H versus Sting was, well, no, it was a good match. I would say it was better than decent. It was a really good match. To me, it was the second best match of the night. Triple H versus Sting. I'm sitting here thinking that maybe Sting is going to be needed to be carried. I feel like Triple H was going to have to carry Sting because Sting isn't the old Sting. You know, he's a 56-year-old Sting. But Sting looked like he held his own. I wouldn't even say Triple H carried him, but Sting held his own. He did look pretty damn good. Um, as far as his figure, he does look like he's in better shape, thank God. But this match had so many surprises with DX coming out, like D-Generation X that came out to help Sting. Uh, Road Dog Jesse Dan, uh, Road, look, Road Dog Jesse James, a badass Billy Gunn, the X-Pod. These guys come out there to help Triple H win his match, of course. As a matter of fact, it was a DQ match. It, it, they didn't say no DQ. They didn't say this was that type of match. But as soon as DX comes out, later on, the NWO come out. I'm talking about Hall. Nash and Hulk Hogan, these guys come out, they're coming out to help Sting, of course. So it was like the WCW guys was helping a WCW guy. As in, all of a sudden, you're getting this brawl between DX, you're getting this brawl between the NWO, a dream battle that people wanted to see. But 
you know, in the end, and it was basically DX, man. They was able to sneak Shawn Michaels into the ring at the last minute as Sting has the Scorpion Deathlock on Triple H, and he comes in and he sweet in music, Sting, and after that happens, Triple H gets a hose of Sting, and he gives him a pedigree, and Triple H goes out with the one, two, three. So Triple H wins this match. Now, as far as the feud continuing, I do not know. It doesn't seem like it because they shook hands towards the end of the match. So it's like, hey, maybe there's no hard feelings there, <laughs> even though they technically cheated to win the match. Let's be honest here. So next match was a tag team match that I do not want to spend too much time on. All you need to know is AJ Lee and Paige won. They beat the Bellas, so let's move on. Next, we had John Cena versus Rusev. John Cena versus Rusev was a decent match. It wasn't great. Of course, John Cena has had better matches, of course, and even more high-profile matches, but this was an okay match. Of course, um, Lana, <laughs> she was messing up out there. You know, she kind of cost Rusev the match, so she gets on the side of the ring gate and to complain to the referee, and then Rusev bumps into her on an accident. When that happens, she falls right down and hurts her ankle, and John Cena grabs him and hits him with the attitude adjustment and gets the one, two, three. I was sort of thinking that he was gonna kick out of it, but that didn't happen. But the match was okay. It was an okay match. John Cena is walking out with the United States Championship again, so, this is a mid-card title, man. Like, we haven't seen John Cena win a mid-card title since he was in the mid-card like 10 years ago. So, I'm just wondering, is he going to bring back the old school, you know, spinning USA title? Let's see. Hopefully he does. I think he should. Like, like just give us a little bit of that old school John Cena, man. Come on. Next, we had... Actually, we had a segment. We had a segment, man. This was a really good segment between The Rock... Stephanie McMahon, Triple H, and of course UFC champion Ronda Rousey. So this was unexpected and it was a good, you know, it was a good one. Ronda Rousey had actually hip tossed Triple H during, you know, during this segment. So it was pretty good. You know, Stephanie McMahon came out there, uh, Triple H came out there, they was talking about how it's because of their WrestleMania as successful as it was, and the Rock comes out there in the worst way exchange, and Stephanie McMahon slaps. Rock and she goes out there. The Rock goes out the ring and gets uh, Ronda Rousey. And he gets Ronda Rousey to basically handle Stephanie McMahon. So that's how that segment ended. It was a pretty good segment and entertaining. It was it was it was really entertaining. Next we had the Undertaker versus Bray Wyatt. All I was hoping is that the Undertaker can, can at least look halfway decent. You know, at least look halfway decent, because you know, let's be honest. The last, his last match with Brock Lesnar, he didn't really look that good, but he did look like he was in better shape. To be honest with you, look like he's like he bulked up as far as um his shoulders, his arms look bigger. So he did look like he was in pretty damn good shape. Um, his hair, he changed his hair a little bit, like he curled his hair up, so he got his hair all slicked back in curls. And so he changed his hair up a little bit. I'm thinking that he was going to be bald. But as far as the match, the match was just okay. It was an okay match. Uh, clearly nothing great. The Undertaker have, has had way better matches. But the match was just okay. I was hoping it was going to be better than what it was. I hope it was just going to be at least decent. The match, you know, I don't think Bray Wyatt is good enough to push The Undertaker to a you know, this amazing match. Especially at this point, in the, at the Undertaker's own age, like, nah, that's not gonna happen. But it was a decent match nonetheless. He tombstoned Bray Wyatt twice, so it took two two tombstones to put out Bray Wyatt, and it was a decent match. Undertaker walks out the winner. Next, we have the main event of the night, which was Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns. And I already knew that Brock Lesnar was gonna be the most cheered guy in this match. Let's be honest here. As soon as Roman Reigns goes out, you know, he was booze. You know, you know, boo boos everywhere. So he was getting booed. And hell, when he was walking down the aisle, coming from the crowd, you know, one of the fans was getting reckless. I think they like pushed him upside his head, you know, they pushed him a little bit. And, you know, one of the, the the security that was walking down with him, they had to like push right back because, you know, they was getting too reckless. You're not supposed to be touching the uh, wrestlers like that. But the match itself was, you no, know, it was a pretty good match. It's, it's, it wasn't a classic. It wasn't a classic, but it was a pretty good damn match. Brock Lesnar went out there looking like a beast. He's looking like the beast incarnate, man. Brock Lesnar is a straight up beast. He is stiff 
ass hell. He was suplexing the hell out of Roman Reigns. Hell, at one point, he suplexed him so many times, he had said, suplex city, bitch. <laughs> and I remember I laughed immediately, laughed immediately at that. You no, know, that, that, that word should have been trending right there, suplex city, bitch. But this match was pretty damn good. And the ending of the match was kind of what you probably expected because it was a rumor. Because Seth Rollins had came out there. Seth Rollins came out there. The rumor was Seth Rollins was going to come out and cash in his money in the bank. And that's exactly what he did. But the rumor I had heard was that Roman Reigns was going to win. Roman Reigns was going to win first. And then Seth Rollins was going to cash in his money in the bank. But it didn't happen that way. Seth Rollins comes out there running like the road runner right in the middle of the ring. Cashes it in. And all of a sudden the match is a triple threat match. So... He cashes it in. He He's getting ready to, to hit Brock Lesnar with the curse stump, but Brock Lesnar was able to turn that into, into the F5, or rather he was getting ready to turn it into the F5 because as soon as he has him over his shoulders, Roman Reigns comes out there and he spears Brock Lesnar. After that, Brock Lesnar rolls out of the ring, and then, of course, Seth Rollins hit Roman Reigns with the curve stump, and it ends like that. One, two, three. Seth Rollins is the new WWE champion of the world. So, the, so the, the ending of that match really wasn't really a big surprise because, like I said, I heard that was a rumor that he was going to cash in his money in the bank. It just happened a little bit different. But uh and also, we had Big Show win the Battle Royal, of course. Big Show wins the Andre Giant Battle Memorial. He wins. I have no problem with that. And also, the Royal Tag Team Championships are retained by Tyson Kidd and Cesaro. So, WrestleMania 31 was a pretty damn good show. If you missed it, man, then you missed out on a pretty good show. This show was damn sure worth $9.99. So, if you haven't done so, please, man, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. This is Wasm Jones. I'm out. Deuces.